Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together the smallest 5700G gaming PC possible right now in 2021. What I have here is the ASRock Jupiter X300. This is kind of an offshoot of their Desk Mini series, but uh, instead of coming in at 1.8 liters like the Desk Mini, the Jupiter actually only comes in at 1 liter. It supports Ryzen APUs up to 65 watts, and today we're going to be slamming the 5700G inside of this little thing. 8 cores, 16 threads with built-in Radeon 8 graphics. Real quick, just wanted to give you a size comparison. As you can see, the Jupiter is a lot thinner than the Desk Mini. They do include a stand with it, and uh, just to give you an idea here, this is an Xbox One controller sitting right on top of the Jupiter. The Jupiter X300 is a bare-bones kit, so you will have to supply your APU, your RAM, and your storage. When it comes to storage, I went with a 1TB Enlin NVMe SSD, 16GB of DDR4 running at 3200MHz, and obviously we're using that AMD 5700G APU. When it comes to the power supply for the Jupiter, it's not built in, so it does come with a brick. This is a 120 watt power supply, and hopefully we have enough for this 5700. Building this tiny PC is actually really simple. The top slides right off and uh, we basically have access to everything we need in here. It does come with enough room for a 2.5 inch SSD. We also have that M.2 drive. It's got the cable included, ready to go, just in case you want to add one. We have our fan, our CPU cooler, and the RAM sits right under this fan. It's a blower style fan and it blows directly over that CPU cooler, exhausting all of the heat out the back. And as you can see, the RAM's gonna sit right underneath here. We have two slots for some SODEM RAM, and I went with 16 gigabytes of Kingston running at 3200 megahertz, but I will overclock this in the BIOS later on to 34. Everything is really easily accessible, even the CPU. I'll just go ahead and remove the built-in cooler, or the included cooler. This is made of aluminum and copper. It's got a full copper plate on the bottom, and it also makes contact with the VRM on the motherboard. Now, the one thing I'm worried about are temps with this 8-core 16-thread APU, but we're still going to try it out and see what happens. We can remove the hard drive bracket with three screws. This is going to give us access to that M.2 slot, and this does come included with AX Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0. There's a module pre-installed. Go ahead and slot my drive right in here. One terabyte Enlin NVMe SSD. And once I have all that secured, I'm going to go ahead and place my APU in here. This does support the AM4 socket up to 65 watts, and believe it or not, the 5700G is rated at 65 watts. Go ahead and lock it in place. I'm going to be adding some Cooler Master Master Gel Thermal Paste, and I'll just go ahead and put this heatsink right back in here. I have the CPU installed. I'm going to go ahead and put the fan back in. This just sits on three little standoffs. There's no screws, and it's totally secure in here once the top is on, but we're ready to go. We have our NVMe SSD, our RAM, and our APU installed. All that's left to do is slide the top cover on and plug this thing in. All right, so here it is booting up. I've installed Windows 10 Pro. I've got a lot of stuff to test out. I have not overclocked anything in the BIOS. We do have access to overclocking the GPU, the RAM, and even the CPU, but right now we're already limited by the power supply. So for this video, I'm only gonna be overclocking the GPU and the RAM. We're gonna go to 3400 on the RAM from 32, and from 2000 on that GPU to 2300 megahertz. But uh, for this first test, we're just gonna leave it stock. I'm going to start up something a little easier to run. We'll go with Overwatch, and once we're done with this, I'll plug everything into my game capture so we can get a better look at this thing. Alright, so here it is. I'm running Windows 10 Pro. As you can see, we have that Ryzen 7 5700G, 8 cores, 16 threads with a base clock of 3.8. I have overclocked this RAM to 3400 MHz in the BIOS, but we have 16 GB of it. And we have the built-in Radeon 8 graphics, which normally runs at 2000 to 2100 MHz, but from the BIOS I was able to overclock this to 2300 MHz, as you can see here, and it'll stay there all day long. 
And temps on this little system actually look pretty good under normal use and even gaming, but it can get quite hot once you max out all 8 cores and 16 threads. We'll take a look at temps by the end of this video, but under normal use and gaming, it does a pretty decent job. I'm actually pretty pleased by the performance that this little system is putting out, but we have kind of set a limit on that 5700G, given that uh, you can set it for 45 watts or 65 watts in the BIOS. I went for 65 watts. But when it comes down to it, we only have that 120 watt power supply, and this can pull a lot more, especially when it's overclocked. But either way you look at it, we're still going to be testing this out, and the first thing I did was run some benchmarks. When it comes to Geekbench 5, we got a single core of 1539, looking really good for the 5700G. And that multi is looking a bit low when it comes to this APU, but 7748 in a small form factor PC like this is still pretty good in my opinion. I also ran Cinebench R23, total multi-core score of 13,130. Now it's time to move over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark. Night Raid, 16,527. Fire Strike, 3,648. And Time Spy, with a 1,382. If we were looking at this PC as a full-size desktop or something a bit bigger with a dedicated GPU, these scores would be on the lower side, but for integrated graphics in the small form factor unit like this, I think these benchmarks came out really good, but these are benchmarks and now it's time to see how this thing really performs when it comes to gaming. First up, we have Forza Horizon 4, 1080p, low settings, and I really wanted to go with a low-medium mix, but unfortunately, uh, we're just not getting the wattage out of this tiny PC with the 5700G. Now, in other bigger systems that I've built with the 5700G, I've been able to get better performance out of this game here. Uh, 1080p, low-medium mix does work a lot better. Here's Fortnite, 1080p, high in performance mode. I got an average of 88 FPS out of this one. I was really impressed by it. But performance mode does work out really well with this game. I think they've done an amazing job with that setting. GTA 5 1080p normal settings, I got an average of 77 FPS out of this, and uh, with these 5000 series APUs, I've had really good luck with this game. Now I completely understand that it's an older game, but when you take a look at the earlier APUs, like the 2400G or the 3400G, this game does struggle on those, but with these newer AMD APUs, even the 5600G does an amazing job with this game. Moving over to something a little harder to run, we have Doom Eternal, 720p, low, and I got an average of 62 FPS out of this. I was really hoping that we could get 900p out of it, but unfortunately, this is just one of those games that really struggles on these APUs. Witcher 3, 720p, low. Initially going into this, I thought I'd have really good luck, but we are under 60 with an average of 58. And finally, on the PC gaming side of things, we have Cyberpunk 2077, 720p, low, got an average of 33 FPS. This has been optimized recently, and it's starting to work a lot better on these APUs, but going up to 1080p 60 is just kind of out of the question. I also wanted to take a look at some emulation, so first up we have PS2 using PCSX2 with the DirectX 11 back end. Here's Sly Cooper at 1440p. We're getting great performance, and some games are playable at 4K, but a lot of this stuff, or the harder to run games like Gran Turismo 4, you will have to stick at 1440p, but still, I think that's really amazing for an APU. Nice job, you're in. 
I've personally had really good luck on the 5700G and the 5600G with SimU. This is a Wii U emulator. We're using the Vulcan backend. This is Breath of the Wild. We're at 30, and I did try to, you know, set this up for 60, but we're only around 54. But with this sitting at 30, this is a very playable experience. And personally, I do prefer playing this at 30 because there are some issues that arise down the road when you're running this at 60. But as you can see here, this little system is handling Wii U emulation quite well. And the final one we're going to test in this video is PS3 using RPCS3. These are the highest temps that I saw out of the CPU. We're at 82 degrees Celsius with this one. It's pulling close to 70 watts in this tiny thing, and the fan is definitely kicking up. But through my whole run here, I didn't see any kind of thermal throttling or anything like that, and we are at 60 with Skate 3, which is a harder one to run for PS3. I always like to test total system power consumption from the wall using a kilowatt meter, and with this system here, at idle, we're around 18 watts. Average gaming, 78, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall was 126 watts. Keep in mind, this was an extreme test with all 8 cores, 16 threads, and the built-in Radeon 8 graphics totally maxed out. But, as you can see, it did overdraw from that 120 watt power supply, which tells me that it definitely needs more juice. But under everyday normal use and even gaming, we didn't go over that wattage threshold and, you know, I was kind of expecting to while gaming, but it's doing a pretty good power management job. When it comes to CPU temps, the Jupiter's cooler did way better than I thought it would. It's not as good as I wanted, but overall it was pretty decent. At idle, we averaged 39 degrees Celsius, while gaming, 72. And in my extreme test, which is a 10 minute stress test, we did hit 92 degrees Celsius, which thermal throttled this unit here. But under normal use and gaming, I didn't see any thermal throttling at all. So overall, I do think that this was a successful test. Would I recommend the Jupiter with the uh, 5700G? Personally, I wouldn't. I would go with something like the Desk Mini, just so we can get a better cooler in there. But if you're looking to build an absolutely tiny Ryzen AMD APU powered PC, then I would definitely take a look at the Jupiter X300. This is about a small as you can get. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on the Jupiter X300 with the 5700G, the 5300, or even the 5600G, let me know in the comments below. I will leave links in the description to everything I used in this build, but like always, thanks for watching.